Artlist.io Finally started jumping, what a day Swear to God I need it, now I can't afford to wait I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait Told him this would happen and we not a minute late Seen him down bad, now they tryna hate Same one try to hit me for the raise Got a mail, now they coming with a place Music licensing reimagined I'm a Don just like the Perrier It's one time when I'm looking at a face On the low like I'm pushing up the pace Told him come down and I'll meet him at a gate Got a check and I bought myself a place They get some money and they blow it on bait I don't flex but I'm pushing all the weight Told him all I swear I got it's what it tastes Phone started jumping what a day Swear to God I need it now I can't afford to wait Hey, good morning. This is Jared and Nate here at the E. Carrie Chuck Show. Uh, excited to be on, man. Like, sure. excited to be here. Uh, it's been a wild week. You know, we started the week with international cold calls. Oh, my gosh. My favorite. It was wild. It was, awesome. it was wild. Uh, we've got Ryan on today, and I am super jacked to talk to him. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being on. Um, I, you know, I just want to hear about the week. You know, it's been a wild week, whether it's been good or bad or indifferent. It's been a wild week. Yeah, from tackling calls in French to tackling logistics issues today, even it's Friday. Yeah, you know it, yeah. it's been a it's been a great week, man. Ryan, how's your week been, brother? Oh man, it's been good. Uh, I recently had to tackle an email in French and uh, uh, working on some international stuff as well. So uh, it was it was weird, man, because they they have different acronyms for everything, right? So mm -hmm. like trying to figure out these acronyms, I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I, you know, sometimes, honestly, I got to tell you a couple of the issues and I want to see how you handle them. Um, you know, we've, uh, we have a brokerage that, that we're fairly close to uh, that does a lot of beta testing for us. And, and so when we reinvent how to go to the moon, they, they handle those launches, if you will, no pun intended there. Um, <laughs> but uh uh, you know, these, these cats, you know, they do everything in their power to, hey, Michael. God, they do tracking, they do all this crazy stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just can't get a hold of the driver. Yeah. You just can't talk to them. You don't yeah. know what the hell happened. They're an incredible company. The driver just goes frigging out. What do you do, Ryan? What, what, when that shit goes down, what's going on in your head? Well, I mean, as a driver, I understand, you know, if you're on your 10 hour sleeper berth, you know, I usually put my plane on airplane mode, my phone on airplane mode when, when, when that happens. So as a driver, I always liked the brokers who integrated with the ELD um, so that they could see where I'm at. Like, and if they call me and they're like, you know, while I'm driving, I'm obviously driving and whether you're hands free or not, it's still a distraction. Yep. So I think for the, for the safety part of it, um, if you're dealing with like a one truck operation and the driver's a dispatcher as well, then just, you know, try to connect with them some other way besides calling them on the phone. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of drivers are, are, you know, a lot of people think they're introverts drivers, right? But honestly, I don't think they are. If you, if you go to a truck stop and you try talking to drivers, they'll talk to you for hours mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they just, they want somebody to talk to. They don't yeah. want somebody who's bothering them. Right. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> it's a fine line of, of, you know, being somebody to talk to and, and, you know, being annoying. <laughs> 100%. Ryan, tell, us, tell us your background. Obviously, you have probably one of the more unique backgrounds. We love when, when you know, drivers move in or transition into freight brokers. Give us a rundown on your background. Yeah, so I've done uh, I've done all this stuff, right? Uh, Hunter's <laughs> house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, my background wasn't blurring out. And I got a treadmill that's got like 10 pounds of dust on it because I've never used it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it's behind me and it just looks horrible. But um, uh, so I started out, uh, you know, I, I was in the construction business. My family, my grandfather was a roofer. Um, so uh, he always said, hey, go to college, go to college. Um, I worked with him, you know, as a young kid and learned the roofing industry, you know, at a young age. Um, mm -hmm. So I already knew a trade. Right. And he's like, you know, you already know a trade. You don't want to be like me. 
Um, you know, I'm 50 years old and I can barely move. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's backbreaking work. So, um, he was like, go to college, go to college. So, um, out of, out of high school, I went right to a, to a university. So I went to a SUNY school, uh, state university of New York. Um, and I studied architecture there. Um, and it was a, it was a four year program, you know, just very entry level stuff. Um, but my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer um, after my first semester. So I came home and took a leave from, from college, um, and then went back to, uh, to a community college local so I can be with him. Um, he ended up passing away at the age of 59 with pancreas and liver cancer. Um, so I continued the, the path to, to architecture kind of by, um, I went to a community college for math and science. So. Mm -hmm. Um, started the math and science stuff. I took an intro to business class and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Let me, you know, let me do this business thing. So um, I ended up graduating with an associate's degree in math and science and associate's degree in business administration. Hmm. Uh, 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 I was in student government and, and uh, you know, very active on campus with all that stuff. And uh, um. I got the opportunity for a scholarship to Clarkson University. So Clarkson is like a border league, like a borderline Ivy League school. Um, so I went to uh, to Clarkson and studied engineering and management. So this was like a five year program um, with a general uh, degree in engineering and a degree in business management. So um, so I have the management, you know, the business background and the engineering background and you know, my grandfather passed away, so my brother and my cousin inherited the business. So when we graduated, when I graduated from there, they were going through huge growth at the time. And they're like, hey, man, you know, we could really use you on the team. And I was like, OK, cool. You know, I had job offers from a lot of big companies, Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies, you know, for big dollars. And I was like, you know, I could go and do that. But is that what I want to do? You know what I mean? So I was like let me help my brother and my cousin out and scale this construction company and, and do some things with it. So we ended up scaling that up to like $5.2 million in, in one year of residential construction, you know, in, in out of one location. So 52 employees I was managing, um, you know, I did most of the office work. I was, you know, kind of jack of all trades working from 5 AM to midnight every day. It was insane. Um, Jeez. so, uh, my, uh, my wife came home from school. She was finished with school. We had a kid on the way. Um, and, uh, I was like, I got to do something different. So, um, I, uh, I went and I, I took my CDL license. I went to school. I paid fucking 10 grand <laughs> to go to, to CDL school. I learned how to how to drive a truck. I mean, being in the construction industry, we we tow trailers a lot. We use dump trailers, you know, to haul the debris. Um, so backing up a trailer and all that stuff was second nature to me. Um, the thing that I had to figure out was the double clutching um, because I already <laughs> knew how to drive manual, but I just didn't know how to drive with a double clutch, you know. So um, it's a little different, but you know, once you pass the road test of double clutching, you don't have to double clutch anymore, you know. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're like super heavy going down a hill and then, then you know you got a double clutch so uh graduated from cdl school took a company driver job uh was making 31 cents a mile i was like man this ain't gonna work dollars yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a week and i don't see my family like this is nuts yep. so i uh i went into one of those lease purchases um, because they said you can make more money in a lease purchase. Um, I did that for a little bit. Um, prior to even getting my license, I started my own carrier authority. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I was just going to go and, and, and do my own thing. I was going to buy my own truck, all that stuff right out of school. But I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to build that bad debt for my family, you know, right out of school. I don't know nothing about this industry. You know, I studied, you know, when I was at Clarkson, I had a minor in supply chain and logistics. So I knew that mm. part of the business, but um, 
I didn't know anything about the trucking industry. So, um, you know, I kind of moved up. So um, I had my carrier authority before I got my license. I went company driver, went lease purchase. Then I came back home, worked for a local guy here. Um, my brother-in-law was driving local and moving containers from uh, Target distribution center to an offsite parking facility. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Jeff's a cool dude. I love Jeff. Yeah, I love Jeff. He's yeah, not man. from me. He's down in New Jersey. Um, That's awesome. So, uh, so I met this guy who's moving these containers out of the lot. He said he wanted to add some trucks to his fleet. He was doing it all by himself. Had one truck that he was moving these containers with. Um, so me and my brother-in-law, we went and team drove for him for for some time because my brother-in-law didn't want to go over the road by himself because he was only doing local stuff. Um, so we went over the road. We we're team driving for him. I built that fleet up to six trucks. So we had five other drivers plus myself. Um, and I was dispatching, managing those drivers, recruiting those drivers and everything while I was driving over the road as well. Um, so that was fun. Um, I, I was trying to get that guy to open a brokerage at the time. I was like, hey, man, you know, you got to open a brokerage. There's way more money in the brokerage, uh, you know, instead of running these trucks. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And he had some business deals in Mexico as well. Um, so he was in like the, the leather industry. I, I don't know how much you know about uh, upstate New York, but we have a town called Gloversville which is famous for making leather gloves. So we have a big leather industry up here. So he used to buy like old leather mills and break the machines down and sell the machines to other people. And uh, he outsourced his leather making to Mexico. So he was <laughs> shipping a lot of machines from here down to Mexico and we would just drop the trailers in Laredo and then he had one of his Mexican drivers come across the border, grab it and bring it to their factory there. So um, that was pretty cool, except for getting out of Laredo because we were dropping our trailer. We didn't have a trailer, an empty trailer there, you know, sometimes. So we had to try to find a power only out of Laredo. So that was always a fun task. Uh, you know, sometimes had to deadhead all the way up to Dallas. But, you know, it's part of the game, right? <laughs> so... Um, so that was fun. And then uh, I ended up uh, getting an opportunity to to get a truck, my own truck. So I got my own truck, my own trailer, uh, so running that over the road. Um, and then we had our fourth baby on the way. So my wife's like, hey, uh, time to come off the road. Yeah. Uh, so I came off the road. I put a driver in my truck, ran that. Um, I got a job running the heavy wrecker. So I was running a, a 60 ton rotator. So I was doing, you know, heavy recoveries and towing, you know, tractor trailers and stuff like that. And, and that was fun. Um, but I had, a, I had enough of being the predatory tower, you know? Um, <laughs> so we weren't a predatory towing company. It was just, it's just a joke, but, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, are you just out taking yeah. people's trucks? Oh uh, my God. Man, those trucks are so expensive that we did not just drive that truck around looking for trucks that were illegally parked. Like it's too expensive to just drive those around. Imagine deadheading around town looking for, you know, a load, right? You're not, yeah. doing that, you know, you're parking your truck and waiting, you know, making phone calls for, for those things. So, um, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it was, it was fun. It was fun. But some of those recoveries were absolute, you know, crazy. Like we went on a recovery guy had five rolls of paper in his trailer, Canadian driver coming down I 87 into Albany. He goes, Oh, stop and go traffic. And you know, I hit my brakes and the rolls shifted through the bulkhead of the trailer into his sleeper cab. Oh, I'm like, man. dude, stop and go traffic. What are you talking about? There's no way those five rolls of paper that weigh 45,000 pounds shifted in stop and go traffic. I'm like, you you mean traffic was stopped and you were still going? <laughs> because there's a 500 foot skid mark, you know, behind us here. <laughs> so, oh my like, gosh. Yeah, That's... man. Like, we had to saw it's all the top of the trailer off to lift the rolls of the paper up because the trailer was snapped in half. It was oh insane. In the, it's, it's steel coils for the van world. Just paper rolls. Just yeah. get rid of it. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had to pick them up and put them on a land doll. And, you know, with the rotator, we had to pick them up and put them on a land doll and try to, you know, picking up rolls of paper with straps, you know, around them. You can't get underneath them, you know, sure. and we don't have a forklift, like a paper lifted forklift where it clamps onto the load. So yeah. you got to choke it. And, uh, Man, that was super sketchy, but we got it done. And the bill was like fifty-two thousand dollars, <laughs> but <laughs> it was over. We were on the side of the interstate, traffic flying past us, two lanes closed for like seven hours. And the state troopers like, "Hey, sergeant is wants to know when you guys are gonna have this done." I was like, "Hey, tell Sarge to get over here and tell us how to do this," you know, because <laughs> it doesn't just happen. Like, come on, man. <laughs> He said, I'll get on the other side of the paper roll. We'll just lift her up. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped driving the heavy wrecker because I was on call all the time. And it was just mm. wasn't a life that I wanted to live. Um, so I said I was home dispatching my truck still with my driver in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't mow the lawn for the eighth day straight anymore. So I said, you know what? Let me um, let me try this broker thing. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how it all started, man. You know, mow the lawn eight times a day and you decide you want to be a freight broker. That's awesome, man. You have such an interesting background and definitely had to cut your teeth to kind of get to where you're at, man. It's just a grind out here. It's a hustle. And, you know, you have a different background than most people in this industry. Oh, yeah. It's crazy how much knowledge you got. And, you know, when, you know, I don't know about Jerry, but I don't have a degree or anything like that. And what I got to where I'm today, just from grinding, just from the hustle and, you know, you really just learn just by living and, and just getting it done. But uh, I appreciate you sharing that. It's an interesting background. Oh, I love it. I and, love it. And it's it, nice to have a carrier on, too, and give us some shed some light on that. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't have a whole lot of carriers on. And um, you just you provide a good value to the carrier network. That's, you know, people that are watching. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, at least you have. I mean, gosh, damn. I remember, you know, do you remember in high school they had you take those tests and they're going to tell you what you're good at? Hey, <laughs> So, no. so there I, I go walk into this thing and, uh, and I take the test and I remember this, the counselor pulling me in the office like that next Friday. And he goes, he goes, Jared, how do you feel about landscaping? <laughs> I, was oh, like, no. I was like, what? I knew at that point my life was over. Like, I was like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm 18 years old and he's like, you better get a good outdoor job. Yeah. I think the golf course is looking for people to mow the lawn. <laughs> And I was like, son like, of a bitch. Are you you know? Yeah. What are you what is to going tell me? on? God, I know. That was like oh. the worst. You went on and got an engineering degree. Yeah. And Freaking awesome, man. I'm out yeah. going long the golf course. What the hell is going on yeah. right now? Jeez Louise. I mean, I think that I wouldn't, I don't think I would have gone to school for engineering if I didn't know a trade already. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I feel yeah. like, yeah. I feel like learning a trade is definitely something that all, you know, high school graduates right now should do. Like, mm. you know, in the summertime, you're 16 years old. You can get a W-2 job at 16 years old. Yeah. You know, I, I was more fortunate. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't say fortunate. It kind of came, you know, at a, at a loss. My, my father committed suicide when I was eight. So um, my mom was a single mom. So for the summer, we had to go to my grandparents. Um, so my grandfather was like, Hey, I have a brother. My brother's four years older than me. And my cousin is four years older than me too. Um, my sister's a year younger. Um, but my grandfather was like, Hey, I'm not going to have three boys living in my house, eating up all my food and not earning mm -hmm. your keep around here. So you, you boys are going to work. You're going to do something. Either you're going to drive around in the truck with me and carry my ladder on estimates. Yeah. Or you're going to be picking up garbage or you're going to learn something. Things. So yeah. I mean, the, child I love labor, the child labor was was there man and <laughs> and we uh my grandfather had a big c50 red chevy dump truck at the time mm -hmm. and uh it didn't have a passenger seat we had like a stool like a like a like a hay stool like it was yeah. made out of hay but like wrapped in leather and that was the passenger seat and i would be riding shotgun in this <laughs> big old oh, truck <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, 10 years old just hauling garbage all over the place and yeah. uh you know it, it it really gives you it gives you that foundation of hard work right and and yeah. having taking a like a sense of pride in what you do mm -hmm. um and you know my grandfather instilled that at in a, in a at a young age, and I feel like that is something that, you know, he's no longer here with us, but that's something that I carry with me every day. Um, 
my my father too. My father was a was a mason, so he worked on um, some big projects in in our area, and we actually got married at a uh, a place where my grandfather my father did all the masonry work. And in the basement of of the place where we got married is where the kitchen is, where they make all the food. And in the corner of that kitchen, when my father poured the foundation slab, he put his initials in the concrete. So when I when we had like the consultation of of going to uh, hire this place, um, you know, to have our wedding there, we said uh, I I told the lady I said hey you know I was wondering if I could go down in the kitchen and see my father's initials in the concrete and she's like what do you mean I'm like well my father you know committed suicide when I was eight and you know he worked here when you guys put the addition on the place and you know rumor has it that his initials are in the concrete and she goes I know exactly where you're talking about and I'm going to talk to the owner and I'm going to get you down there so that was like a big thing with when we got married you know I felt like my father was there right um with us because you know he's, his initials were down in the in the dirt in, in the concrete there so that was pretty cool that is awesome man that's awesome that is wild man like that's uh yeah. you know it's interesting how you know what's up adam dealing I with i honestly beautiful story yeah right? like i, I mean like it, dealing with the yeah. kind of childhood and, and even early you know adult adversity in mm -hmm. your life is it's tough you know it, it you gotta grow faster than you grow faster yeah. you have to be able to yeah. adapt and, and yeah. do those things uh, so now i don't i don't shave myself the barbershop does this because <laughs> his dad never taught me how to shave um so you know to keep this keep this up it's kind of expensive so sometimes you, you, i look yeah. like a homeless man <laughs> you, you look good man you look good there's people out there that wish they had a beard trust me oh uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh you jeff you know this is our demo room we're having some uh some wi or some wi-fi problems you know nebraska our freaking wind has been crazy this week so it's been a knocked mess. it out of our studio yeah, yeah we we actually uh jeff this is kind of fun we work in this crazy like startup mm -hmm. gearing nebraska if you guys don't know is the startup capital of the world yeah <laughs> so we What's share up, we share this office with like four other companies it's it's yeah so we just reserved this space and they let us put some cool picks up yeah <laughs> so so that's uh that's yeah Log logistics lounge in the house what's up yeah, Robert? what's going on AKA guys pedro aka freestyle champ yeah exactly know, holy cow uh michael says uh michael says a couple things we'll throw out some yeah. questions here ryan nate and jared how do you three stay so young healthy looking in this tough world of transportation <laughs> oh Just, lord <laughs> you gotta take care of the mind take care of the body man that's it it's definitely a stressful stressful energy and, and i can't talk to that yeah see okay. i can't talk but i look good right yeah, you do look great. um look but great. you gotta take care of your body you know mm. jared has pushed himself and myself to either work out <clears throat> do something positive i mean you really it's it's, it, this this industry can take oh, over so yeah. quickly and stress you the heck out. Yeah, you know, Ryan, I'd be interested in what you do to kind of keep yourself right. I mean, I'm not half the man Jared is. I'm not going for the cold showers. Uh, oh, I know. This guy's <laughs> I don't know if you made it up to your to your your goal of what was it three minutes in the cold shower? Yeah, or like that. yeah I, I did it there, but uh, I'm not I'm not doing that. When I was in high school, I I played oh. football. I wrestled and I played football, uh, baseball. So. Um, you know, I definitely took my my share of cold plunges, but uh, I get it. Uh, I mean, this young looks is all jeans, man. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, this is not maintained yeah. at all. <laughs> the treadmill is over there in the in the blurred background, and uh, it hasn't been used. I actually, I bought a new power cord for it because I think a mouse a mouse like ate the power cord that I had. So, um, so we hired the 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 exterminators or whatever the people that are trapping the mouse the mice now, and uh, I got a new cord and it's sitting on the on the table over there, but uh, hasn't been used. You know, <laughs> you know, honestly, Ryan, I have I don't know if anyone else is on on TikTok or is it just me? I don't know. But just you. have you <laughs> have you watched that guy that runs pool balls on his treadmill and then he puts like oh, objects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost three and a half hours the other day watching that. I would, like at one point, I was like, "I wonder if I can bet on this." So then I messaged the guy while we were live. I was like, "Any chance we can live? You know, just start gambling." And he's like, "I'll give you six to one on the nine ball." Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> 
So, uh, you know, you got there's another opportunity sitting right behind you. And you, you, yeah. don't, even know. you yeah, don't even know. Right in front of you, actually. It's crazy. That's not uh, enough. Let's run some pool balls. That's funny. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a cheap one either. My wife went yeah. for uh, the Bowflex. So we got the Bowflex yeah. uh, treadmill. We have yeah. the Bowflex elliptical. I got the Bowflex bench and then the select the dumbbells. Uh, oh, yeah. just got, we got all this like workout stuff and then had four children. We were working out in other ways instead. <laughs> <That's fair>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. should have been using the trend though. Instead, we got four children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. What are we doing? We're doing this hey, all It's not now. your fault you're so attractive. Yeah. It's yeah. So I love yeah. it. You know, so, Ryan, <laughs> gotta say it. <laughs> um, you are like, I love it, man. I love it. You're very, um, you know, active on LinkedIn. I'm curious on like, do you have freight brokers hitting you up for advice, things like that, or maybe carriers hitting you up for advice? And what is what's LinkedIn looking like for you right now? Uh, so we have uh, like a couple uh, uh, newer agents that work with uh, HD Ships. So um, I try to help them out. Gotcha. Um, some other agents, uh, you know, have, have reached out to me and, and I'm an, I mean, I'm an open book. If you want to give me a call, you know, you shoot me a message on LinkedIn, I'll give you my cell phone number and <laughs> you want to know what my availability is. Um, yeah. you know, I'm up until four o'clock in the morning sometimes. And some people watching can, can attest to that. Uh, yeah. um, I don't sleep. I don't know if you can see my bags. I tried to put some cover up on and, and the cold spoons and cucumbers, <laughs> but <laughs> they don't work too well <laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah, um, yeah you know, I, don't, I don't mind um you know helping people i mean i use a lot of a lot of cool tools um mm -hmm. carrier check being one of them and you know it's it's been super helpful for for sourcing uh carriers for finding shippers for you know even uh you know vetting carriers right um you guys have that tool where it shows if it's a match with other other companies and and you know you can get that conversation out of the way of why are you connected to these other companies before you tender a load to that you know before you send that that carrier raycon you know um i like I to get on the phone with them you know and find out why you know yeah. why are you connected to these companies please explain you that's 100% what we do, man. Yeah. And you do a great job of just explaining it. You know how to use the system and just um, and add some flavor to it. You know, Jared's probably going to fire me after what you just said and just say, I got Ryan. I don't need you. Um, I get it. Um, but <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate the shout out and how you use the system. You're, you're definitely one of our power users and you use it in the, the best way possible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the best, thing, the best thing is learning how to drive a truck. I never knew how to drive a truck until I got e-carrier check and I learned how to drive a truck. Like, mm. I, I don't know like how good I am, like, cause there's not like a, like a leaderboard, but I'm pretty good. I'm going to have to throw, you have to get that we'll figured get out. Yeah. Right I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty good at driving a truck. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, if you guys, anybody who's interested in learning how to drive a truck, I mean, E carrier check, we'll give it to you for is it one hundred and twenty dollars a month? Um, yep. I mean, after month one, you'll be you'll be an expert. Trust me, I mean, you won't get no work done, but you'll know how to drive a truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christian. You know, Ryan. I'll let you kind of take this too, man. But uh, you know, how do I become a broker, and what's the best way to make money? <laughs> um, how do you become a broker? Uh, uh, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, Ryan Van Brocklin, I'll, I'll help you out. Um, you know, we, uh, to become a broker, you know, if you want to be, so there's a couple things that are there, right? So becoming a broker and doing it on your own is, is a very challenging path. I believe, I feel like if you want to do it, you should start out as a freight agent, which is what I do. Um, I'm a freight okay. agent for HD shipping solutions, which is a company out of Reno, Nevada. We have an office in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We have an office in Columbia, and we have an office over in the UK. Um, so, um, very, um, very good company. I mean, we have an awesome operations team. I'm cradle to grave. What that means is, from the time that, from infancy, right, from the cradle when your baby's first born, you take that load all the way to the grave when it dies. So. Um, 
so cradle to grave um, is what I do. Um, I didn't want to do cradle to grave, but uh, that's that's the path I chose. Um, so I don't really like the I don't like the operations, honestly. I hate doing the carrier vetting. I hate dealing with the TNS. I hate that stuff. Um, but you can do just sales. I mean, it's really it's really the path you want to choose, right? So because I had my carrier authority, I was thinking about doing my own brokerage, right? And then as I entered this freight agent role and, and been doing this for a little while, um, I learned quickly that if I would have done that, I would have been setting myself up for failure. Mm. Um, it's very hard to reach out to shippers trying to get their business and then asking them to prepay for your freight. And then it's very hard to book a carrier without having to pay them as soon as they pick up your load, you know, and, and, and offer them a free quick pay, right? Because you, you literally, as a new brokerage, you need to start out, you know, giving everything away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, your margins are really low, um, but you have to build that credit. It's just like any new business, right? I mean, you guys are bootstrapping a carrier check. Imagine bootstrapping a, you know, a, a, a brokerage. Like, I I couldn't do that. I, no yeah. I, I couldn't put that financial stress on my, my, on my family. Um, yeah. So... Will I do it down the road? Who knows? Um, you know, who knows if I'll go into a W two role? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. Um, okay. My wife graduates from uh, with her doctorate in nurse practitioner in May, so I might, I might uh, end up being a, a call center worker at her doctor's <laughs> office. You know, I don't know. I might be the janitor. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd start working on your golf game. Like, yeah. here we go. <laughs> uh, when I was when I was at the construction company, you know, we were we were winded dined a lot about a, by a lot of manufacturers, like uh, you know, in the roofing and building materials industry. So I uh, we had a, a um a muni course uh that was like two miles from our office and it was like thirty dollars for eighteen with a cart. And I, it was like the best deal in, in the world. And uh, it was not a bad Muni course. Like a lot of the Muni courses, you know, they're, they're, you know, jacked up. Like they don't take good care of them. But this particular one was very nice. So um, if I played golf four or five times a week when I was with the construction company, that was, that was a slow week. You know, sometimes I'd be playing like nine, ten times a week, you know, just back to back 18 holes. And, it was crazy, but and and I didn't have to pay for it. These guys would be paying for it, and pay for the drinks, pay for the the lunch cart, and everything. It was great. But now I'm on the other side. I have to wine and dine people. Yeah, right. <laughs> and bringing donuts to people's offices and stuff. And you know, mm -hmm. when I I used to be the one getting the donuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's it's cool, man. I I mean, I enjoy the I enjoy the transportation industry and logistics and supply chain um i like it i like what i do um there's a lot of flexibility so i get to spend time with the kids and stuff like that so yeah. um, i feel like i lost a lot of that time when i was driving over the road mm -hmm. do i miss being in a truck yes i do i miss that kid coming by you know in his parents car pulling his arm for you to blow the horn that was that that just made my day you know yeah. And, and I encourage anybody who has kids to 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 have their kids do that. Like, encourage them to have the trucks blow their horn because yeah. drivers really love that. Yeah, I I still do. I was say, Jared's forty two. We'll go Nate. road trip. Like, <laughs> Nate and I went to the truck stop the other day, and I was doing it. I I don't care. <laughs> I'm all you pulling them back in. Get you, in here. You <laughs> give me a pack of taquitos and some menthols, and I'm back. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's yeah, go. That's let's awesome. Go. We have to do a show at the truck stop. I That's, know, but yeah. you know, we got to go when down there. When it's I, not windy, yeah. When it's not windy, which is every day in right. Alaska, it's terrible. You, you know, Michael. Um, I, I think Ryan kind of hit on the head. You know, he has his wise. You know, that's what oh, keeps man. him motivated. You know, he sounds like he's a family man. But you know, Ryan, you may have other uh, motivation over there on your end. You know, maybe spill a little of that to you as well. Yeah, 
I mean, you can tell I'm a very talkative person. I'm an open book, you know. Mm -hmm. So you would think like, you know, this guy's got no problem getting on the phone. But my anxiety to make that first cold call every single day is through the roof. It's yeah. through the roof, you know. Like to pick up that phone and make that first phone call is like the worst part of the day. Like yeah. it's the worst, but um, uh, once you make that call, it's 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 smooth sailing from there. Once you get past the first one, it's a done deal. We're now doing a hundred calls, right? It's over. Do I pick up the phone every day? No, yeah. I don't like it. But uh, it you know it's something that has to be done. Um, mm -hmm. I use I use some systems that help me uh, help me automate this process as well. Um, so it's uh, it's cool. Um, you know, eCarrier Check has has the damn doorbell, right? And I, I mm -hmm. actually add it to another page, right? So mm -hmm. I get a phone call, a text message, and an email that tells me I need to pick up this damn phone. I love that you're using that. That's and great. Literally, if I don't do it, I won't pick up the phone. No. So I bring my kids to school and drop them off at school. They got to be there between 820 and 840. My first notification from e-carrier check that I got to call a shipper is at 9 a.m. Hmm. And then I schedule them every 15 minutes after that. If it's a day that I know that I have to be on the phones, every yeah. 15 minutes, I get a notification from e-carrier check through email, text, and phone call that I need to call this this shipper. And the best thing is when, like, I love the feeling lucky, right? Find the shipper, I'm feeling lucky, and pull the roulette wheel, or, or the, the slot machine, right? And then it gives me the shipper, and boom, there's my next prospect. I don't even have to look for him. I hit a button, and you find him for me. And then... You click the magnifying glass, brings me right to Google search for their company. And then their whole company website is right there. Go to contact us, see if they have somebody, go to their about page, see if there's someone listed that, you know, you feel like you could talk to. If not, I got another software where I just hit a button and it type in logistics or shipping manager. And it tells me who I need to talk to. Right. It's just... I mean, if you're not using the, like, so because I had a construction background, right? I'm, I'm always, I've been a firm believer of you. You're only as good as the tools that you have, right? Mm. So if I don't have a router and I'm trying to make custom cabinets, how great am I going to be at making custom cabinets? Not no. very efficient. Not you know, good. I could buy some chisels and stuff like that and make some kitchen cabinets, but that's not very very efficient right that's that's not the way to do it so how can you be more efficient and and increase your your metrics right like you the more you put in the more you're going to get out and that's just that's that's always been the case like you're not going to change that that's like laws of physics right, mm. right. <laughs> no matter what you're doing that's never going to change the more you put in the more you get out just like a slot machine you know Keep yeah. on putting more in. Eventually, something will come out. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I needed to hear. That's, I'm going gambling soon. That's what I needed to that, hear. <laughs> that was it, Mike. That yeah. was that was your that was mic great. drop. That yeah. was the mic drop right there. I just needed to know that something eventually is coming out. <laughs> yeah, just keep working, man. That's yeah. You know, a lot of people like obviously we talk with a lot of new people just thinking about getting in this industry, and you uh -huh. know we tell them it's it's going to be a grind. You're going to have to pick up the phone. Not a lot of things will just come to you. Right. You know what I mean? But there's different, you know, we talked about this on Wednesday. There's different methods you can do. You know, Will Jenkins hit it on the head, you know, emailing, cold calling, LinkedIn messages, video messages. There's so many different things you got to do yeah. to get yourself out there to make that happen. So oh, yeah. 100% Ryan, I agree with you, man. You just got to go do it yeah. and just see yeah. what happens. That's Absolutely. The goal. If I had to give one piece of advice that I learned from someone else at a very young uh, freight broker career, um, it would be adding my photo to my email. Like there's a picture of me in in my email signature. Now this same photo is carried through every profile picture I have through all my social media, right? Mm -hmm. So my LinkedIn profile picture, my 
my ex profile picture is all the same photo of me. Um, so I think that that is like, that adds a personal touch right away. Now, this morning, I was just thinking about um, putting a family photo in there and, and you know, showing everyone and just, you know, a quick blurb about me. I'm the fat, ugly guy in the photo. All the good looking people are, 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 are my children and my wife. So, you know, and then, and then, you know, the next line is the first line is I'm the fat, ugly guy in the photo. The next line is, okay, enough about me. <laughs> you know, is that, how do you feel about that cold email, Jared? I mean, you were a broker. Yeah. I, I used to send, and this is, you know, prior to the big C word, YouTube doesn't like us saying that. Um, I used to send some crazy. So I had a buddy, I had a buddy that uh, used to do like maintenance at, at, at Memorial Stadium and at UNL for Nebraska. Obviously we bleed, bleed red. So like, I mean, I would send some crazy cold emails. Like, like, do you have any idea how much ice is used in Memorial Stadium over the weekend? And that was my subject line. Like, <laughs> like people are like, what in the world? But I, I, I completely agree with you. I think, you know, honestly, the family, the, I had a, there was a guy we used to deal with uh, that used to have a fish that he would hold up that it was a terrible size fish. Um, you know, most people are proud of like these monsters and it was guy. like six inches. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I think you have to throw that back. But, uh, you know, I love just the personal touch, you know, a, a buddy of mine, uh, has his dog in his picture. Um, you know, just those little things I think are really important because we still have to be, they're all humans, whether they're shipping yeah. manager, or transportation manager, doesn't matter. Everybody just wants to be, just, let's just make it a little more personal. Yeah. You don't have to have a shirt and tie on. Yeah. And I think that if you mention like a hobby or an interest that you're into, you, you can directly build on that. Like oh, yeah. if you, if you're into football, no matter what team you like, you're just a football fan, right? There's something we could talk about. I literally oh. was just having a conversation about football. I'm a New York Giants fan. The guy that I was having a conversation about is a Washington Commanders fan. We we're just talking about the draft and what we think is going to happen. You know, he's like, oh, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, Daniels versus May? You know, because Washington commanders have the second pick in the draft. They could pick either one of them. And I told him, I said, I think Daniels is more of a short term solution, like four to five years. I think he's a more elusive player and a bigger playmaker. But I think May is more, of, you know, more of a long term solution. So it depends on which way the commanders really want to go, you know, and exactly <laughs> it's, Honestly. there's my my two cents and now yeah. we, we you know now we're building a relationship right yeah. and he's yeah. a recruiter from another brokerage but you know you're not recruiting you're not going to recruit me but we can talk about football yeah <laughs> right. i love it yeah if if jeff is still on at the broker uh carrier uh summit you know if you if you guys want to run a broker carrier combine you know, let's just see where that goes. Let's run some 40s. And... You know what's <laughs> yeah. so funny is we were talking about this last night in a Twitter space. Um, Reed from Lost Freight does freight therapy mm -hmm. on Thursday nights. So we we're in the Twitter space. And he's like, you know what we should do? He's like, we should have a boxing match between two people who are in the industry who don't get along. We should have a boxing match at bats. And I was <laughs> like, man. That's a great idea, but I don't think enough people have the cojones to do that. <laughs> no. no. Not in this industry. We're in the wrong industry. I love Maybe that. Maybe in the construction industry, you know, that would happen. But logistics, I just don't think there's too many, uh, you know, guys ready to go knuckles to knuckles. No, no. I, You know, honestly, if if Reed wanted to bring back, you might throw this at him. I don't know him, actually. We should, we should try to connect with him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here's what needs to come back, though is arm wrestling in the back of gas stations like <laughs> like let's let's get tire killer to friggin just get out there and he's just he's just slamming friggin arms you know what i mean like we're, taking bets we're flipping lids and slamming arms <laughs> that's what needs to come back with yeah me. i'm fine with that you know a smooth game of rock paper scissors is cool too i mean let's <laughs> let's settle the differences like bed right yeah oh my god scissors yeah. arm wrestling or boxing you choose bud <laughs> 
your choice. Let's get a green <laughs> goblin on the front of somebody's truck and let's go. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not pulling out six shooters and settle, settling it that way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Ryan, <laughs> you are so full of information. I, honestly, a lot of value today, man. Like 100%. I really enjoyed today's show. It was, it was just, I just, a, I just love being able good. to laugh and talk some talk good stuff too. A lot do. of value. We laughed. Ah. That was great stuff, man. Needed I appreciate it you. You know uh, what I mean? Needed it Friday. Yeah. So. Yeah. Friday, March 1st. Uh -huh. It's a new month. Mm -hmm. It's good to start a new month on a Friday. That's yeah. right. You know, Let's go. Jerry walks in every day, first of the month. Rabbit, rabbit. You know, everyone have a good month. Uh, take care of yourselves. Yeah. Don't give up. <laughs> no, nope. just keep pushing. Just keep just pushing. Just keep pushing. Yeah. I love it. Well, Ryan, I appreciate you, man. I working from home today, though. Yeah. They Not should. us. No, we're here, we're <laughs> we're in this little incubator of startups right yeah. here. That's what we do. Yeah. We grind. Yeah. So, so I love it, guys. Have a great Friday. Thanks for being on. Uh, we appreciate everybody's questions and interaction. You guys are awesome. So thank you. You guys. See. You.